Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. In today's video, I am doing a perfume collection update, if you will. This is kind of a mishmash video. I have a couple of fragrances that I am decluttering, and then I have quite a few fragrances that I have added into my collection that I wanna share with you. And some of them I did get in the Sephora VIB sale. I'm just going to throw it all together in one video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I really appreciate you being here and I hope you will consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload. I do try to upload at least two times per week. And to all my returning subscribers, thank you, thank you so much for all your support. I appreciate you. And let's get into this video. All right, let's start off with the perfumes that are leaving my collection. So I have one that is already gone. This one is Frank Boclet's Ylang Ylang. This is a fragrance that I told you guys I kind of struggled with. This was a blind buy that I purchased a few months ago and it just didn't work out for me. It's not a bad fragrance at all. It has a lot of caramel and a lot of Ylang Ylang, but the caramel is very, very dense and thick and sweet, which usually I like, but I discovered that I do not like the combination of caramel about and ylang ylang together it just kind of created this very sweet thick syrupy caramel gourmand with a tropical yellow floral i don't know the combination just seemed weird and i didn't really enjoy it i did try to wear it a couple of times to really see how I felt about it in different weather, and it just didn't work out. Every time I wore it, I was just kind of like, meh, you know? It, I didn't hate it, it wasn't a scrubber. It has really, really good performance, and I just felt like someone else could just really enjoy that fragrance, because I do think it's a good perfume. It's just not for my personal taste, so I went ahead and passed that one along. Okay, up next, I am deciding to let go of my Apple Brandy on the Rocks by Killian. This is a fragrance that I think is a good fragrance. I recommend this fragrance. I think it is a good, fresh, crisp, apple, springtime type of fragrance. And I really do like the way that this smells. I think it's really nice. My issue is that it pulls very masculine on my skin. The cedar notes in the base really come through and I don't know, it just smells very, very masculine on me. But I know a lot of women who do enjoy this, so I think it might just be my skin chemistry. I feel like this is a unisex fragrance that just so happens to pull pretty masculine for me. Now I will say this is not a safe blind buy. This is definitely one that you wanna try before you buy, but I think it's a great fragrance, especially for springtime. If you like apple, if you want a crisp apple, if you're not looking for that ooey gooey, sticky sweet apple pie, but you want a crisp, fresh, apple that you can wear in the spring and summer, this is a great fragrance. So it's just not working for me, but I still think it's good if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Apple Brandy on the Rocks by Killian go. The last perfume to be leaving my collection is by Juliana's Perfumes, and this is Aphrodite's Rose. This is a dupe for Initio's Atomic Rose, which I have made the decision that I am going to add Atomic Rose into my collection. I've been debating on that one. If you've been watching my channel, you know the, the drama behind that. <laughs> I've been going back and forth on Atomic Rose. I absolutely love it. I felt a little uncomfortable with it, but... I am getting over that. So I think it's a gorgeous rose fragrance and I do wanna add the original Atomic Rose into my collection when winter comes. It's definitely a cold weather perfume for me. It's not one that I can wear in the hot weather, so I'm just gonna wait. But there is no need for me to keep this in my collection since I know I'm gonna add Atomic Rose to my collection. I think that this is a good dupe for sure. I don't think it's 100% spot on, but I think it's pretty close, especially when it dries down. The opening isn't the same. I feel like this is sweeter, but when it dries down and you know, when you get the wafts in the air, I think it would be difficult to tell the fragrances apart, but I still want the real thing. So I am going to go ahead and pass this one along. Like I said, good dupe, but not 100% spot on. The performance is really good. It's not the beast that Atomic Rose is, but it's a really good performing fragrance. And I do like it, but yeah, I just want the real thing. So that is by Juliana's Perfumes, Aphrodite's Rose. All right, guys, up next, I do wanna share with you three new fragrances that I've added into my collection. These are not from the Sephora VIB sale. So I'm gonna save my Sephora VIB sale haul 
at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But up first, this first fragrance I did get gifted to me. They sent this to me in PR. This is by Soradora, and this is Bro Senliande. Yeah, I have no idea if I pronounced that right. Brosili, no, it's Brosiliande. Brosiliande. <laughs> something like that. But anyway, this is what the box looks like, and they had reached out to me and asked if I was interested in trying their fragrances and asked me to pick out one full bottle and then they'd send me the rest of them in sample form. And I did ask for this fragrance even though I had never smelled it before. And the reason why I did ask for this one is because I had seen Maria Colette raving about this fragrance in one of her recent videos. She said her and her son like fight over this fragrance and she was talking about it and describing it in a way that was making my mouth water. It sounded like a gorgeous gourmand fragrance that I would really, really like and be into. So this is the one I asked for a full bottle of without actually smelling it first. But when I actually looked at the notes, I got a little scared. So the notes in the top are caramel, rum, and cinnamon, which are perfect. I absolutely love those notes. And then we have lemon, vanilla, and lime, which that's what I was the most excited about because I've really been enjoying lime. And then we have Sicilian bergamot. All good things so far, right? <laughs> and then when I saw these next notes, I was like, oh, maybe I made a mistake. So we have castorium, which is an animalic kind of smelling note that I don't usually care for. It's in absolute aphrodisiac, and I told you guys I don't really like that fragrance because I get that very dirty animalic smell. There's also civet in here, which sometimes doesn't work out for me either. Again, very animalic, and I'm not the biggest animalic person. But there's ginger, there's styrax, there's iris, there's coriander. CO2 extracts and sesame, which I like all of that. I was just worried about the animalic notes in here. However, thankfully, I can't smell anything animalic in here at all. This truly just smells like the gourmand notes to me, and I absolutely love it. Plus, the performance of this is so good. This will last you all day. It is just intoxicating. The scent trail is amazing and I don't know why more people don't talk about this one. This one is just beautiful but I'm so glad I heard Maria Colette raving about this one. I'm so glad this is the one I chose. So I do really get the caramel in here which I love but it's not over the top. It's not too sweet. There's rum in here which I don't really pick up the rum. I wouldn't say this is an overly boozy fragrance. I do get a little bit of the cinnamon. I definitely get that lemon lime vibe in here and I love that. Lots and lots of vanilla and bergamot. I don't get any any animalic notes in here, but then what really makes this interesting is you've got that ginger, coriander, and sesame in the base, and I really pick up on that. It's very interesting, and it really makes the fragrance feel unique. Now, when you look on Fragrantica, the very first perfume that pops up in the This Perfume Reminds Me Of is by Exidolo Love and Crime, which I have and love that perfume, and I get where people are coming from. It's in that same family. But Love and Crime is very orange. There's orange, there's pink pepper, so there's a spicy pink pepper and orange vibe in that fragrance. And then it smells like a spicy orange sponge cake to me. I can see where people are comparing the two because this is in the same family as that, but this is different. This is lime, this is vanilla with some caramel, and then that sesame and coriander and ginger in the base really does something different. If you like Love and Crime, I feel like you would like this fragrance as well. Same family, but they're not the same, if that makes sense. So super happy to have this in my collection. I think it's gorgeous, and I cannot wait to wear this some more. All right, if you've been watching my channel, you know that my love for Dama Bianca is very real, and this is on my tray for April, and I am almost finished with this bottle, so I knew it was time. It was time to get the 100 ml. So it comes in this box here and this is the presentation and the 100 ml comes with the tassel so this is what the 30 ml bottle looks like and then this is the 100 ml and the 100 ml is just absolutely beautiful i love the little tassel and this i love these bottles i think these bottles are just beautiful so dama bianca is a top 10 for life fragrance for me so that's why i went ahead and purchased the large size and i wear this one as you can tell i wear this one quite often it is one of my most worn fragrances it is one of my most loved fragrances 
This is kumquat and lime in the opening. <laughs> I really get a lot of that lime, zesty, and kumquat vibe that I just absolutely love. There's some florals in here. I believe there's violet and iris and some lilac and just a couple of soft powdery type of florals. I don't get a ton of that, but it does lean to kind of a powdery touch to the fragrance. And then in the base, there's vanilla and there's some sandalwood and cedar. So it's kind of like a vanilla woody base, but everything is very delicate in this perfume. This is a fantastic fantastic fragrance to wear in the summertime. If you're looking for a summertime vanilla, this is it. Okay performance. I have to overspray. It's not loud, but I can smell it on me and it lasts for a pretty good amount of time. I can't be without it. I will have this perfume for life. I love it so, so much. That is by Zerzhov Dama Bianca. All right, up next we have probably my most risky blind buy I have ever done in my life. Okay, listen, this is by Amouage and this is Lilac Love. I had never smelled this before and I struggle with Amouage. So of course I blind bought it. Amouage is a very, very challenging house and it is not a safe house to blind buy from at all. I don't know what came over me. I feel like I got possessed or I blacked out or something. I'm not really sure, but I feel like I was just having a very weak moment. I did a lot of blind buying lately and I told myself I wasn't gonna blind buy in 2023, but apparently that's not happening. So <laughs> this is what the bottle looks like. How gorgeous is this packaging? How gorgeous is this bottle? I just was drooling over this color. The bottle really convinced me to go ahead and go with the fragrance. I mean, I thought I was going to like the fragrance, but look at the color of this bottle. I love purple. It's my favorite color. I'm a sucker for purple. This is a flower bomb in the opening. It has a lot of florals. It has lilac, obviously. It has heliotrope, which gives off this very, very powdery vibe to the fragrance. I believe there's gardenia, maybe some rose, just lots of florals in the opening. But what I found super interesting is that there's also cacao in here. And I thought lilac and chocolate, doesn't that just somehow that just sounded so appealing to me? I don't know why. I'm looking for spring springtime gourmands. I'm looking for a spring and summer gourmand. I'm I'm a gourmand girl. I love gourmands. So I'm just on the hunt for fragrances that are not going to be too much. You know, most of the gourmands I have in my collection are for fall and winter. They're just too much. But gourmands that are, you know, semi-gourmands, floral gourmands for spring and summer, I'm really just vibing with that right now. That's what I was hoping that this would be. Now, luckily for me, this turned to be a wild success. I am so excited because I adore this fragrance. I sprayed this and I was in love right away. Just love it for a sniff for me. But I will say this is not going to be for everyone. This is a challenging fragrance and this, this is not a safe blind buy. You have to get your nose on this <laughs> because it is extremely powdery. So if you don't like powdery fragrances, you will hate this because when I first sprayed it, it was literally like <laughs> powder. <laughs> That's what I got. There's a lot of heliotrope in here. I get a lot of the lilac. I do pick up on some of the other florals in here, but for me, heliotrope and lilac are the top notes. And then that cacao, almost immediately after that big blast of powder comes through, you get this cacao, which kind of tones the powderiness down and you get kind of a creamy vibe. There's also sandalwood in here as well. So I feel like that kind of balances it out just a little bit, but it does remain pretty powdery throughout the entire fragrance, just FYI. But that cacao and lilac, it's almost like they play off of each other. I don't really fully know how to explain it, but it's like the lilac and the chocolate or the cacao, they kind of complement each other and they kind of just amplify each other somehow. I don't get it as much when I smell it off the cap, but when I spray this on my skin, that cacao, it smells, it smells chocolatey, like chocolatey sandalwood creamy goodness. <laughs> I just, I just love this fragrance. 
There's also tonka bean and orris. There's vanilla, sandalwood, and patchouli in the base. So this is not a full-on gourmand by any stretch of the imagination, but it has gourmand touches. But then the interesting part is that there's patchouli in here. Now the patchouli is not over the top. It's not really noticeable, but it's there. It's slightly in the background, making it even more interesting because you've got a bunch of florals, then you've got some gourmand touches, and now you have patchouli. So it's kind of it's challenging. It's a challenging fragrance that's not gonna be for everyone, but I love it. And I love that added touch of patchouli. It gives it a little bit more character. It's definitely a complex fragrance. Definitely try before you buy, but I think it's beautiful and I love it. And I'm so happy I got it, even though it was kind of a foolish decision. <laughs> But it worked out this time. So that is by Amouage Lilac Love. All right, guys, I feel like I just threw so many things into this video and this video is gonna be forever long. I apologize, but let's quickly go over what I got in the Sephora VIB sale. So the first perfume, these are all perfumes, by the way. I'm not, I didn't get any makeup. I just got perfumes. So this is by Killian and this is Princess. This was a blind buy. I told you, I blacked out. Again, I was looking for that spring and summer gourmand. I love marshmallow, and I've heard so many people talking about this. And the reason why I waited so long to try this fragrance is because people were saying the performance is not great. But finally, I just had to get it because it sounded like exactly what I was looking for. I have this itch that I'm trying to scratch, and I want a summer gourmand fragrance and guess what i found it because this is beautiful this was love at first sniff and i'm kind of mad at myself that i waited so long to try this fragrance so there's lots of notes in here but mostly what i get is the lemon the ginger i get that green tea note in here for sure and then a lot of vanilla and marshmallows especially marshmallow in the base and it is exactly what I was looking for. It is a gourmand, but it's kind of like a fresh, spicy take on a gourmand, I guess I could say. The ginger is definitely present. That lemon in the opening, I smell, that kind of gives it that that bright summertime feel. And then the ginger gives it a little bit of a spicy kick, but also that fresh springtime feel. And then you've got that green tea note in here. And I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about that, but it is beautiful and it makes this fragrance a little different. It's not just your typical sweet, you know, kind of marshmallow fragrance. That green tea note really is what makes this fragrance, this fragrance in my opinion, and it's beautiful. And then the marshmallow in the base is delectable. I want to go to the store and get a bunch of marshmallows and just stuff them in my face whenever I wear this fragrance. It makes me crave actual marshmallows. It is fluffy, it is yummy, plus it has vanilla in the base as well, which just makes it even better. It's not too much though, because of the green tea and the ginger and the lemon, it's not cloying or too much for hot weather. Now the performance is okay. I really didn't have too much of an issue. It's not amazing. It's not gonna fill up the room. It doesn't project really, really far. I think I got about five to six hours of wear out of this. I sprayed it on my clothes and I felt like I could smell it for a decent amount of time and I was enjoying the wafts I was getting off of my clothes and my skin. So to me, I feel like the performance is acceptable. Absolutely gorgeous fragrance in my opinion. All right, up next we have the new My Way. This is the Le Parfum, and I told you guys already I had tested this one first. I had a, a subscriber send me a decant of it, and I got to test it out. I fell in love with it. I think it is so amazing, so I decided to take advantage of the sale and get a full size bottle and this bottle is my favorite out of all the my ways i love this bottle i think this bottle is gorgeous i love the pink at the top and that ombre effect to that royal blue i think it's it's beautiful and i've always liked the little jewel that they put or whatever that is rock jewel <laughs> that they put on the top i think it's really pretty i think this is a fantastic fantastic new release and i would say that there are going to be a lot of people i think that like this i think if you're not a fan of the original my way you still should check this one out because it is mostly iris i like the fact that they kept a little bit of the my way dna in here just a touch so they can still 
call it a my way, but they changed it enough that it's not repetitive because we already have the original and then I felt like the intense version was pretty similar to the original. We don't need another one. You know, I'm glad that they changed it up. I'm glad that the star of the show in here is Iris instead of Tuberose. There is still Tuberose in here, but this is an Iris perfume. And I also like that they made this one musky. It has vanilla in the base as well, but I get a lot more muskiness from this one than I do the original. So this is definitely different enough to warrant giving it a try even if you don't like the original but I feel like if you do like the original and you like Iris I think you're still gonna like this one really good performance on this one this lasts all day on me and I get a beautiful scent bubble around me no issues with the performance at all this is so good so if you like Iris check this out for sure all right up next I did blind buy the new good girl by Carolina Herrera this is good girl blush and Again, I just felt like this was going to be a safe blind buy for me. Everything that is in here is notes that I like, and it didn't seem overly complicated. You know, it seems like a very mass appealing designer scent that is going to be easy to like, at least for me. And I was right. It is definitely an easy fragrance to like. But first of all, the color of this bottle is just beautiful and I am a fan of these bottles. I know not everybody likes the stilettos but I do. I'm not the biggest fan of the original Good Girl but I really love Very Good Girl and Very Good Girl Glam and now I really love Good Girl Blush. However, I was very surprised with some of the things I was reading on Fragrantica. People were saying that this perfume reminds them of Very Good Girl. Some people were saying it reminds them of Delina. I'm not getting that experience with this fragrance at all. I don't get the Delina references at all. I don't even think this smells like Very Good Girl very much. I think there's a tiny amount of Very Good Girl in here, just a small smidge maybe with the rose, but that's it. Very Good Girl is lychee and I think there's rhubarb or red currant or something like that in the opening. It's very tart. It's very, yeah, it's very tart in the opening with like red fruits. And then there's a lot of rose and there's vanilla and vetiver in the base. Where this one has bergamot and mandarin orange in the opening and I definitely pick that up. I get a bergamot orange citrusy vibe in the opening of this which that is not what is in very good girl so i don't get the comparisons and then in the mid you have uh, peony rose water and ylang ylang and i pick up peony more than i pick up rose or ylang ylang in here so basically what i get is i get citrusy orange and bergamot i get a lot of peony with just a touch of rose and then i get a lot of vanilla for sure in the base when this dries down it's a very delicious creamy vanilla let me know in the comment section if you've tried this are you getting Delina vibes from this? Because I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused, but yeah, I actually need to spray this on because, I mean, I've only worn it twice now, so it's not like I'm an expert on this perfume, and it doesn't matter anyway because if that's what you're picking up, that's what you're picking up. Our noses are different, so it's okay. We don't all have to agree on how perfumes smell. But yeah, I'm not getting Delina vibes from this at all. Let me know in the comment section if you do. It's not earth shattering. It's definitely not groundbreaking, but I really enjoy it. I think it smells really good. It's very feminine and it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous for the springtime. This has really good performance. I don't have any issue with the performance at all. And I think it is going to be a very easy reach a very enjoyable easy reach pretty girl springtime fragrance i really like it a lot all right back to my search for spring and summer appropriate gourmands i got a lotion and perfume combo so i did pick up by sol de janeiro the brazilian boom boom cream i used to think it was bum bum cream but i think it's boom boom cream but anyway i thought it was funnier when it was bum bum cream yes i am 12 years old i absolutely love this lotion i think we all can agree how delicious this is. I mean, I'm sure there's some people out there that don't like it, but this is so delicious. And so I decided to go ahead and get the perfume that goes along with it. So this is Chirosa 62, the Eau de Parfum, and this is the newer version. I know they reformulated to try to make it last longer, and some people say that it's not the same. I don't really know. I never tried the original, but I think this is really good. Like, this is delicious. And it's okay performance. It's not great, but it's okay. And especially if you layer the two together, then they amplify each other for sure. And this is just going to be my fun 
summertime, beachy, sweet, yummy, delicious gourmand. It's very warm, it has a lot of pistachio and almond, has a lot of that nuttiness. I get a lot of pistachio in here. It has heliotrope and jasmine in the mid, but I don't really pick any of that up. And then I get a lot of the caramel, vanilla. There's definitely salt in here, and then there's sandalwood. It's not overly salty. It's not a overly salty fragrance, but I do pick up a touch of that salt, which I think just makes it even better. But I am just so excited. I cannot wait to wear these two together and smell like a bronzed caramel pistachio woman in the summertime. So that is by Sol de Janeiro Charosa 62 and the Boom Boom Cream. And that is it, you guys. Those are the fragrances that I picked up in this Sephora VIB sale some other fragrances that I hauled, and my three perfumes that I decluttered. Let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are on these fragrances. I love to hear from you guys. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having a fantastic day, and I will hopefully see you in my next video. Bye!